pray that you had a good night's rest. I pray that all is well under the circumstances that you would be strong in the spirit. Um, if you would bow with us for a word of prayer as we begin to partake in our appetizer of the day, dealing with our Sunday school lesson, Justly Leading. Dear God in heaven, how we love you, how we praise you, how we thank you for this day, this time, this privilege, and this opportunity. We pray that you bless us and breathe upon us even now. Forgive us for our faults and failures. O oh God, have mercy and separate us from our sins and shames. We pray that you would create in us a clean heart, renew a right spirit in us even right now. Give us strength that we may serve you and study thy word. Give us your spirit, O oh God, that we may understand what you're saying. And allow us to be the better and blessed for being in this place or for sharing on Facebook or on YouTube or even calling in on the phone. We love you and we thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray and ask it all, for that is the only name that matters. Amen. Amen. Justly leading is our lesson for today in Malachi chapter 2, um, also partnering in Malachi chapter 3. We will be dealing with Malachi chapter 1 through 9, uh, chapter, excuse me, chapter 2, 1 through 9. And then we would jump over to Malachi 3, verse 5 through 6. Um, leading justly, leading justly is our lesson. If you look at the very first verse of chapter 1, if you look at the very first verse of Malachi, it says that Malachi was burdened. He was burdened by the word of the Lord. Burden to have to share and uh, 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 yeah share what thus said the, the Lord to the people of God. But if you want to write something down, if you want to write something down, if you want to write something down. That's just it. You want to take a note. Uh, not only was he burdened because we always say it and, and it's so true. It's a blessing and a burden to share the word of God. Because it affects us so much so it weighs heavy on us that we have to hear but also have to share. Does that make sense? Amen. Um, and so Malachi's name means my messenger. Malachi's name means my messenger. Malachi's name means my messenger. He is the last of the minor prophets and the last one to use his prophetic voice before the New Testament. He's the last book. And it is said that from Malachi to Matthew, it's about 400 years in between. So God had stopped talking after Malachi closed his mouth. And so here it is, 100 years after their return, um, the Jews had expectations on of how life should be uh, for God's chosen people. They had rebuilt the temple. They had reinstated the temple worship as instructed by Haggai and Zechariah years prior. They were still in economic turmoil. They suffered from poor, poor crops and were a and were a far cry from a major independent nation that they once were. Uh, there was little evidence of the blessings promised to Abraham and Moses. The suffering through uh, those brought about from their forefathers repeated disobedience caused them, this is what it did, and this is what it did. It caused them to question God's love. It, it, it's, it's, when, it's when we mess up put ourselves in a muck and a mess, and it feels as if God has turned his back on us, but he's not the one that messed up. We were. And sometimes when we mess up so bad, we just wonder, does God really love me? Well, if you didn't do what you did in the first place, you wouldn't have to question that. Does that make sense? Sometimes we get ourselves in so many issues where we should not have, watch this, we should be assured of God's love and never, and never questioning God's love. Yeah. All right. He says, as a result of their disobedience and disillusionment, 
their hearts were indifferent or hardened toward God. The, the priests and the people violated many requirements of the Mosaic law, haphazardly making sacrifices, tithes, and offerings, marrying pagans, divorcing freely, and living more morally, morally uh, bankrupt lives in general. Uh, justly, leading justly. There, there are three things that our Sunday school lessons want, or lesson wants to give us. Number one, God's warning to the priests in, in dealing with verses one through, the, through four. Then he gives priestly examples dealing with verse five through seven. And then the priest's sins dealing with Malachi 2, 8 and verse 9. And then it jumps over to chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Listen to what he says in verse 1 through 4. And now, O ye priests, this commandment is for you. He has been commanding the people. Now he's commanding and instructing the priests. Listen to what he says. If you will not hear, and if you will not lay it to heart, take it serious, to give glory unto my name, to give me credit, God says, said the Lord of hosts. Listen, if you will not, if you will not, if you will not, guess what I will do? I will even send a curse upon you. I will curse your blessings. Yea, matter of fact, I have cursed them already. Because you did not lay it to heart. You didn't take it serious. Verse 3. Behold, this is the third thing. I will corrupt your seed. And, now catch this y'all. Spread dung upon your faces. Even the dung of your soul and feasts. And one shall take you away with it, with the dung. And ye shall know that I have sent this commandment unto you, that my covenant might be with Levi, saith the Lord of hosts. Check, check this out. He's, God has been dealing with the people uh, 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 for so long, giving them information, also instruction. But now he's saying, here it is. It's not necessarily the people's fault. Yes, they had their part in it, in disobeying. But it's really the priest's fault. Check out what he says. He says, listen, Malachi deals with the priests, which are from the tribe of Levi. This is the tribe of worship. The third, the third son of uh, Jacob. However, only the descendants of Levi's great-grandson Aaron, the first high priest, can legitimately serve as priest and offer sacrifices on the altar on behalf of the people. Uh, uh, it, 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 it is the job of the priest and priestly duties to, to go every year, y'all remember that? And offer sacrifices. On behalf of the people, they have to go through the Holy of Holies. They have to have a rope on them to tie them out. And, and just in case you can't hear the bell ringing, that means they drop dead. And can't nobody go in there and get them. So they have to pull out and tag out and, and get them out of the Holy of Holies. And so with that being said, he says, I have a problem, not only when they sacrifice, but in order for the, the priests to go in the Holy of Holies to sacrifice, they got to gather the sacrifice outside of the temple. And these sacrifices deal with animal sacrifices that will deal with sin offerings. Making a sacrifice for the forgiveness of sin. Y'all with me? The priests represented the people before a holy God through sacrifices, through sacrifice and instructed the people in the word and the will of God. Instead of instructing the people and receiving, they had to receive instructions. This is what he did. He, he, this, this was a review.
that was necessary because the priest knew better. Just in case you're wondering why the priests are in trouble, here it is. The people had to give the sacrifices to the priests, and the sacrifices needed to be perfect. Y'all with me? According to Leviticus chapter 22, verse 21 and 24, whosoever offer a, offereth a sacrifice unto the Lord, it shall be perfect to be accepted. There shall be no blemish therein. You shall not offer unto the Lord that which is bruised or crushed or broken or cut. Check this out. The people brought their offering. They brought their sacrifices. They brought their tithes. They brought their offering to the Lord. But they had to give it to the priest. The priest had to receive the offering. But he was not to receive the offering if it was not perfect. In other words, you cannot give God any old thing. You cannot give God your worst. You have to give him your best. You cannot tip God. You have to tithe to God. You, you don't give sparingly. You have to give your offering that is a sacrifice. Something that is not minute to you, but meaningful to you. Oh, hear me today. He says the offering, here it is. The, this is what type of animals they brought to God. Blind animals, crippled animals, and diseased animals. Now, he, he accepts people who are blind, who are crippled, and diseased. But the offering that we give to him it's something that we give from our hearts out of thankfulness or, or forget. Now, now, get the context of this. The animal offerings were for to cover their sins. It was a sacrifice to cover their sins. Now, watch this. When you know you've done wrong, when you know you messed up, that's when especially you ought to give your best. Yeah, yeah. To say, I'm sorry. When you give your sacrifice, when you give your offering, does your offering say that you say, I'm sorry? It is as if that these offerings that they gave to God was to say, just let it slide for right today. <laughs> Their heart wasn't in it. And so the priest got, got in trouble. Because it was direct defiance of the regulations of the handbook of Leviticus. The book of Leviticus which gives us an understanding of what offerings or sacrifices should look like. But the priest, here it is, dummy down to the people. And said, oh that's okay, you, you just did this. No, you don't give God anything. And you don't even just give him something. You give him the best. So what happens is God was so displeased with their conduct that he gave the priests a severe warning. If they refused to listen and make the appropriate change, God would curse them. He, he curses which are hardships and difficulties. There were nothing new to Israel. In fact, the curses for disobedience to God's law were embedded in the Mosaic covenant. Here it is. He says to the priest, the very blessings that you receive, the good from God that you receive, will be cursed. And, and the reason why he had a problem. God had a problem with what they were giving and what the priests were accepting because as, as a priest or as a pastor of people, as a leader of people, you don't just dummy down expectations to meet people's qualifications. Mm -hmm. True. You share what God expects of us. You encourage your people to get there. You don't allow God to get us where we are. He's already did that through his son, Jesus Christ. 
and he gave his best doing that. So it's now time for us to get ourselves straight, get ourselves up so that we can meet the qualifications and expectations for God. He says, listen, the problem was that their heart's condition was the reason why they got cursed and the, the reason why the curse was already in effect. The, the, the curse was so complete, even the priestly blessings they pronounced on the people would be cursed. So he says in verse 3, Behold, I will corrupt your seed and spread dung upon your faces, even the dung of your solemn feasts, and one and one shall take a, take you away with it, and ye shall know that I have sent this commandment unto you, that my covenant be might be with Levi, said the Lord of hosts. Here it is. Because the priest dishonored God, God will in turn dishonor the priest as well as their descendants. What if God treated us? Like we treated him. But not just treat us. What if he treated our children the way we treated him? That, that's exactly what God is saying. Since you dishonor me, I'm going to give you a taste of your own medicine. I will dishonor you. And as a result of dishonoring you, what I will do, what I will do then is treat you how you treated me. And so, with that being said, he was displeased and, and the descendants, but he says, he says a word in verse 3. Behold, pay attention. Listen up. So what I'm getting ready to say. And so he says, look and take notice. Not only will the current priest be punished for their misdeeds, but their seed. The descendants would suffer an even strenuous punishment. He says, I, I not only behold, but I will corrupt. It is to rebuke or reprove. This, the manner in which this will occur is by spreading dung upon your faces. Dung. Dung. Manure. Dung. Or the excrement from the sacrificial animals. It, it was all normally burned outside of the camp along with the unused parts of the sacrifice. In other words, this was a symbolic and a graphic way for God to announce that he would make the priests unclean. And if they were unclean, here it is, they would be unable to serve. And then if they were unable to serve, they would then be removed from them, from, from the priesthood, just as the dog was removed and burned. Stated penalty for the priest was severe for the purpose of getting them to repent so that God would restore them. Once restored, they could honor God once again by leading the people in true worship with acceptable sacrifices. These severe words of warning were unmistakably from God. Check this out. Could that be the reason why God has shut down everything? <laughs> Not only the things we like and love, but he shut down the things, watch this, we, we, we take it lightly. Shut down our churches. We can't get full like we once were. Amen. Shut it all down. For us to reflect that as much as, or if you come, 
whenever you come. And then for those of you who keep coming, it is for us to reflect and recognize that we need to repent. I, I'm sorry, Lord, for taking this lightly. Mm. I'm sorry for when I should have done it, I, I didn't do it like I, right. I, I... I'm sorry for not giving you my best. Right. But while God has shut everything down from among us and around us, it's my prayer that God didn't shut himself down. Amen. Amen. Because again, Malachi, this is the last time God speaks until 400 years to the New Testament. So all that time from Malachi to Matthew, been 400 years, and in those 400 years, God never said no. So he wants to, hear this to restore us, get us back to where we should be. Get us back to where we need to be. Because he made a promise with us. But the promise, the problem is we didn't uphold our part. And so with that being said, as we didn't uphold our part, we have to do our part and now we have to be restored and go back to where we messed up. Pick up where we left off. Verse 5, my covenant was with him of life and peace, and I gave them to him for the fear wherewith he feared me and was afraid before my name. The law of truth was in his mouth, and iniquity was not found in his lips. He walked with me in peace and equity and did turn many away from iniquity, for the priest's lips should keep knowledge and they should seek the law at his mouth for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. This covenant was made after Israel was freed from the bondage in Egypt and camped at the foot of Mount Sinai. He, he goes back and deals with the example, the priest example and the greatest priest example was Moses. He goes back into how uh, 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 Moses was on the mountain and he came down and they taught Aaron, the, the quote-unquote assistant pastor, mm. to allowing them to build up a calf because Moses was gone. And so when Moses came down from after receiving the commandments, everyone had lost their mind and Moses got so mad that he broke the tablet. <laughs> Exodus 32, if you don't believe me. He got so mad that, 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 that he, he broke the tablets of stone with the Ten Commandments and gave the command for those on the Lord's side to remove themselves as a sign of their fidelity to the Lord. What do you have to remove yourself to let, you know, to let God know I ain't with that? The Levites obeyed. As a result, God set them apart as the priestly tribe with these words. Today you have ordained yourselves for the service of the Lord, for you obeyed him even though it meant killing your own sons and brothers. What extent are you to go? Are you willing to go to obey the Lord? Who are you willing to cut off? Who are you willing to let go so that you can be set aside, ordained, for God's use, watch this, in this unfortunate time. So the covenant with Levi was for life and peace. It brought spiritual life because the priests offered the blood of the animal sacrifices to God for the sins of the people. As a result of receiving forgiveness of sin, it brought peace with God which resulted in the peace of God. That's exactly what Jesus brought. He brought life. But he also brought peace. That he would, we would be at peace with God. Because we were separated. But through Jesus Christ we are united with God. 
And we ought to, as people of God, have the peace of God. Peace with him. Here it is. And peace with one another. He says in verse 8, when you are departed out of the way, you have caused many to stumble at the law. You, you will have corrupted the covenant of Levi, said the Lord of hosts. Therefore, have I also made you contemplable um, and based before all the people according as ye have not kept my ways, but have been partial in the law. Check this out. He says, the priests were mandated to teach the law to the people of Israel in Deuteronomy 33 and 10. But here it is. The priest's teaching caused many to stumble because they themselves had departed from the way. Telling the people that defiled and diseased animals were acceptable for sacrifice violated the covenant God made with the Levites and the warning they were given to be held responsible for any covenant breaking. Here it is. They were in trouble. They were in trouble. They were in trouble because they accepted what was not pleasing to God. Instead of gratitude, for that honor, they demonstrated it by offering the vile sacrifices. Chapter 3, verse 5 um, through 6, and we're done. Israel's judgment would not be limited to the Levites, but would include the whole nation. Usually when God says he will come near, it is for blessing. But in this instance, God comes near to his people for judgment. He says, and I will come near to you to judge. And I will be swift. I will be a swift, excuse me, witness against the sorcerers and against the adulterers and against false swearers and against those who that are oppressed in the hireling in the wages, the, the widow and the fatherless, and that turn aside the stranger from his right and fear not me, said the Lord of hosts, for I am the Lord. I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Watch this judgment, which also means justice. Justice speaks of the act of deciding a case and then issuing a verdict with the associated penalty that is required in order to restore order. Notice the unusual nature of this particular court case brought against the people. God is not only the judge. He is also the witness against the people and the prosecutor who brought the charges. His verdict is that very every that every aspect of society is guilty. His verdict is everybody is guilty. The family is afflicted with adulterers. The workplace is infected with employers who cheat employees of their wages. The community. The community leaders oppress the widows and orphans and mistreat strangers and immigrants. Mm -hmm. The courts are corrupted yeah. Yeah. with false swearers, pre perjurers. Mm -hmm. Verse uh, number five, the, 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 the sorcerers in the society practice evil with aid of evil spirits. The overarching charge is that all these transgressions occur because the people do not fear the Lord. But, this is the question many are asking today. Will this judgment bring about the end of Israel? Will this judgment that God has given the United States and the whole world bring about the end? With this virus 
Has he, has he brought about the end with the coronavirus? Will the people be consumed? He says, no. The descendants of Jacob will not be destroyed because of God's covenant, his promise to the nation of Israel. God's word, like himself, Amen. is immutable. Amen. And that is the basis of, for Israel's hope. We too have the same basis for hope. Amen. Whenever we mess up and go astray, our covenant keeping God is true to his word and will forgive and cleanse us if we but confess. This is your lesson for today on leading justly. Are there any questions? Are there any questions concerning the lesson? Um, those of you who may, who, those of you who may be on the phone, my phone hung up automatically. I don't know why or what, and so I'm trying to, I try to get you guys back on the best way I could. Um, Sister Turner. Pastor, you know this. Uh, we didn't know our Sunday school lesson today. We didn't know all of this and everything was going to come. What's happening today? No man. It's right here now in our lesson. The just leaders and how the people, you know, are taking advantage of each other, you know. Yes, this is all coming to pass, you know, and everything. God knows what he's doing, you know. Yes, he, he knows what he's done. He make no mistake, you know. So we gotta wake up and listen, you know, to what's happening, you know. Yes, ma'am. We don't have to we don't have to gouge things, we don't have to be against others, you know. Just live and pray, you know. So there's gonna be better times. God's going to bring it on. You know? Amen. Not man. We just got to wait. Amen. The main thing is pray. Amen. 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 Are there any questions? Those who are on our phone or comments, you can press star six. Say, say it one more time. That imperfect sacrifice that he accepted, what did he do with it? He gave it to God. He offered it to God. But he knew that it was... He knew that it was defiant. That's mm -hmm. and, and that's what a lot of these pastors and preachers do. They know there's some stuff that we are not question. I, I don't have no, no... Here's the issue. The manner of our, of our church society what we've been dealing with for especially the last 10 years. We're trying to come up, keep the same message, come up with different methods. We are, we're to attract young people, to, to do all these things, to attract young people. That's good and great. But however, the scripture says, train up a child in the way that they should go. You, there's nothing wrong with change. Nothing wrong with change. But when it goes against from giving God your best, and giving him just any old thing uh, for worship. Uh, I know we talk about that verse, come as you are. Um, he's literally talking about the condition you're in. Um, he's not necessarily talking about the clothing. But you are not making a big issue. If you don't have, you don't pass. But if you can do better, why not give God your best? Right. Yeah. Don't, don't come in here just any old kind of way. And, and now that deals with us, watch this, physically, but also spiritually. Yeah. We all not come in here. Any old. He told Moses, who was on the mount, mountain of God, on Mount Sinai, take off your shoes, yeah. for this is holy ground. There's so many fields, so many mess that we have to take off as we present ourselves to God, both more so inwardly, mm -hmm. because we, we are, we're, we're always willing and ready to judge the outward. Because I believe you, you need to present yourself a certain way. You need to. Because back then, the priests had roles. And, and, and it wasn't just no any kind of role. It was priestly roles. You, you had to wear these priestly roles. 
When you came to the temple, you came like you were dressed going to the temple. Mm -hmm. But now we just come and but we train our children. Oh, they don't wear that. Who, who, who pays for their clothes? Mm -hmm. Who dresses them? They don't dress themselves. So how are you going to tell me they don't wear this or wear that? Does that make sense? And, and really, it's a mindset. So the, 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 we as leaders should not dummy down so that we can draw a crowd. We ought to be teaching them and, and telling them what, let's say, the Lord, being an example. Amen. You know, when you come to church, you, you know, you act like there's a certain way you act in this. Right? You sit up straight. You know, you, 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 there's a way you act because you ought to teach them. Here it is. It's just not any place you come on Sunday. This is the presence of God. This is the house of God. So when you go to your house and you got your house clothes on, you wear your house clothes at your house. But when you come to God's house, now here it is. It's based on where you place him in your life. young man, this been years ago, that came here, and he had a hat on. So, myself and I forget who it was, approached him, asked him to take his hat off. And someone was saying, you know, y'all gonna run people away from here, like, you know, doing this. And I said, you know, when they go to the club, mm -hmm. there are rules that you can't do in the club, so why can't there be rules to follow the There, there are rules, rules and regulations everywhere, and that's the thing. Uh, um, we expect love. God says, I love you like a father loves his child, chastises his child. He, the father always is trying to guide and get up his child in the right place and path. Um, he's trying to give, give, pull the best out of his child. That's what God tries, is looking to do to us. Pull the best out of him. He lets us live. He lets us make our mistakes. He lets us do this and do that. But but he wants to pull the best out of all of us. Amen. And with that, um, sometimes he got to shut us down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, when we when we don't take it seriously. I mean, I, I, I and, and again, it's not a tit for tat thing. It's just a general thing. When and he's specifically talking about offering. Uh oh. <laughs> and, and and why are they talking about offering when uh, we unemployed right now and when 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 you know all this coronavirus is coming? This is what's happening. Yeah. That 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 while wow, the world and, and that's what he said. The world in chapter three, the uh, uh, truck from from the White House, the governor's house, to the mayor's uh, um, house, whatever the offices, they're trying to take advantage of us. Yes. I don't don't believe every politician is what you say. Say it. Say it. Say it. Democrat, Republican, say anything. It. I don't That's care. Right. All of them lie. Say it. And you put them in the right position, they'll turn to you like turn on you like never before. Yeah. And I mean that. Yeah. And so our confidence is not in them, but the idea is is what we're giving to God, what we're offering God. Even though, you know, I'm sh we're shut down, we're going through crisis, but we still got, got to give God the best that we have. Yeah, yeah. We can't give him nothing crippled, nothing disabled, nothing. You know, we got to give God the best. And, and that was their fault for thinking, the people's fault, for thinking that it was okay to give God anything when they knew better. But it was the priest's fault for accepting it because they really knew better. They have a handbook on what's acceptable and what's not, and that's the book of Leviticus. You know, when I was growing up, you know, my grandmother always said, don't let somebody drag you down. You bring them up to your level. Yeah, and that's the idea. We want to drag God down. He already came down through Jesus. Oh, yeah. So why do we have to bring him down the Lord? Amen. No, we're trying to, we, God is the creator, and his creation needs to be more like him. Yeah. He has set a standard, and we need to step up to it, and we strive to it. It doesn't mean that we're going to be perfect. None of us are perfect, but we have an example of what not to do what to do. We have an example. 
leading justly. That, so he deals with the leaders. He deals with these pastors and teachers. He says, man, y'all led them astray by thinking that it was okay to just come any old, to give, come in any old kind of way, giving any old kind of way, doing any old kind of thing. No, the house of God is to offer your best. From the dress to the, to, and, and you ain't dressing to impress. No, but 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 it's it's to offer. I mean, from from a musician to the preacher to the singer to anybody that is in this place, it is to give God your best. If you don't feel like giving God your best, don't come. That's why many of us stay home. That's why many of us watch and and been watching before all this coronavirus. We just been like them, and they still ain't gay. I be wanting to call people name out so much. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. That they can stay home and have church instead of coming to the house of God to have church. Because I'm gonna say it like this. Your behavior is based on your belief. If you don't believe it's necessary, you're going to behave like it ain't necessary. Because the scripture says, first of all, and, and, and I kid y'all not, I was going to do a series on what Jesus did on Sundays, mm. on the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. And what Jesus did on the Sabbath, he, he went to the tabernacle of the temple and taught, and then he did miracles. And that's why the disciples and the I mean, Pharisees got so mad with him because he was working. And it couldn't work. And I think I'm still doing what Jesus did, um, what the Savior did on Sundays, on the Sabbath. Um, there's, 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 there's a list of things. I'm going to do a series on that. Uh, because we need to, and, and I was going to do it, and I thought uh, God gave it to me about a month ago. And all this happened, and I, I find it strange. Um, but when we, trust me, when we get back, if the Lord allows us to come back in here, I bet you everybody be crawling in. I bet you everybody be crawling. And I'm praying that God will have enough mercy. He has it, but I'm praying that he will be moved in mercy to allow us to give us that chance to come together in such a way, form, and uh, fat, facet. Um, but that's what I believe. I believe that they think it's not necessary. They always have these excuses. I'm working, and, and they be at home. Um, and some of them post what they do. You know, <laughs> just be lying. You ain't lying to me. Mm -hmm. Some of them don't, don't come because they don't want to give. They have a free entertainment, free show online, you know, but won't give. Anybody else got a question? Anybody else have a question on the phone? I messed up. Uh, my phone messed up on y'all. I'm so sorry. Uh, We'll try it again some other time. I'm sorry. God bless you. God keep you. I hope you were blessed by this lesson. Thank you. Amen. 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 Amen.